Hi, I'm Gareth Pronovost and I'm an Airtable and Zapier consultant. In this video, we're going to be doing a deep dive on formulas. Specifically, we're looking at date time formulas and we're going to be doing if statements. And with if statements, always need to also look at the nested if statement. So we're going to be uh, building an if statement inside an if statement inside an if statement. can go on forever, can get very confusing, and I'm going to show you my tip for dealing with these. So without further ado, let's jump on in. Welcome to Entrepreneurship by the Numbers, where we help unlock the potential of your business with data-driven metrics. All right, so before we jump in, this is actually part two on a previous video. So from last week, we did uh, a calendar view where you could uh, fill out a form and reserve time on that calendar. If you want to see that video, I'll include a link below in the description. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into it now. So jumping on in here, everything is uh, an input except for the start date time and the end date time. So for this uh, video, we're going to be working on the start date time formula here. So we're going to get into if statements, we're going to get into a lot of date time stuff. So let's uh, start by creating a new field. I'm just going to drag this over here so that we can look at it in between uh, date and time. And so this is what it's going to be uh, working with. So we're just going to call this, whoops, formula number one, and we'll make it a formula field. And so what we're trying to do, we're trying to take a date and we're trying to add a certain amount of time to that date. And there's a function called date add that we're going to look at first. So let's let's take a look at date add. So date add, right here, requires that we tell it what the uh, input date time is, and then it wants a count, which is going to be an integer. So it gives give it an integer, and then uh, tell it what the unit is. So in this example, it says the field deadline minus two weeks. So that, so this would in that case take two weeks off of the deadline. Well, we're going to start with date. That is the name of our field here. So we're starting with that date. And uh, we want to add the start time to it. So let's add that start time. And the start time is hours. Blam. <laughs> all right. So let's take a look. Doesn't work at all, of course. So what is returning here is we're seeing 12 a.m.s all the way down. And the reason for this is this function, as I mentioned, requires a number here. And start time is not recognized as a number. It's looking like a string, like a text string. Because it's coming back with this 8 colon 00 AM, it doesn't know what to do with that. It doesn't know that that's eight hours. So we need to tell it. So let's instead, let's build another formula here. We're going to bring this one over. And uh, it's going to get on this side. And let's call this formula 2. So this is the first tip that I have when you're building formulas and you're starting to like piece a bunch of things together. It's a lot of times it's easier to build a couple of formulas, get them working, and then kind of combine them. So I'll show you more about that, uh, show you my process right here. So now we've got to figure out how do we get start time to look at to look like just an integer. So I want 8 a.m. to be an 8 and I want 12 p.m. to be a 12. So how do I get that to happen? Well, I'm going to use the left function. So the left function says, uh, give me a string, tell me how many to look at, and I'm going to return that. So I want you to look at 8, and I want you to return 8, and I want you to look at 12 colon 00, 00 p.m., and I want you to return 12. So let's look at start time. That's the, uh, the first input. And then I want you to look at the first two, uh, the first two characters, and I want you to bring those back. All right. Now we're getting close, but not all the way, because in the case where it's a uh, time that is 9 a.m., 8 a.m., it's going to return that colon. And that's not helping me because it's still not an integer yet, right? So now what we're going to do is take a look at the find function. Let me show you the find function. Find function says, give me something to find. It can be a character. It can be a string of characters. And tell me where to look for that. And I'll tell you what position it's in. So I want you to find that colon, because the colon is the part that's kind of throwing this off right now. Find the colon and find it in start time. And this third parameter is the start from position. If we leave it blank, it's going to start from the far left, and that's what we want. So perfect, leaving it blank. And it's telling us now, well, the colon is in the second position. The colon is in the third position. It's in the second position. Perfect. This is exactly what we want. Why? 
I'm going to do an if statement around this. So I'm going to say if this, you know, the colon is equal to 2. So what does this mean? This says if the colon is in position 2, right? And then now we uh, now I'm going to return value 1. And if it's not position 2, i.e. it's position 3, right? Because there's only two places the colon can be in this case. If it's not position 2, then I'm going to output value 2. So what I want is if it's in position 2, then I only want you to return the leftmost character, the single most character. So I want you to return left start time comma 1, right? This is what I want to return if the colon's in position 2. If it's not in position 2, that means it must be in position 3. So then I want you to return position or the first two uh, characters. If that got confusing, just break it down into basic parts. So we have this first section is the logical question. If the colon is in position 2 of start time, if that's true, then we're going to return value 1. Value 1 is left start time 1. So the, the one most in the leftmost integer. And in the case where the colon is not in position 2, if it's not true, then we're returning the value 2, which is this part here. Left start time 2 positions. So uh, let's, oh, and one more parenthesis here. And let's see if we got that formula right. All right, this looks good. So now we have integers. Now we can start playing with this a little bit more. So that's great. So I'm going to now copy this formula and I'm going to start dropping it into here. So instead of start time, I want this formula. So this is why breaking it into pieces can be, uh, you know, a lot more rewarding this way. So here I am. I'm dropping in that formula with a control C. I copied it and now I just control V and pasted it. All right, so how does this look? We've got 831 at, I'm gonna, let me move this over here. 831 at 8 a.m., perfect. 831 at 12 p.m., perfect. 831 at 6 p.m., no. <laughs> the reason is we're on a 12-hour clock, so we returned the time 6, and that's great. Uh, that is the hour, but we want to return 18 instead of 6. And the reason for that is it's 6 p.m., not 6 a.m. Uh, so now we've got to take this a little bit further. And how can we get this to return 18 instead? Well, let's bring in another formula. I'm going to break it into yet a third part. I know you thought this was going to be a lot easier. All right. So what's this formula going to say? It's going to say, right for this one, we're going to look at the right of uh, this function. So we're going to look at the right two characters of start time. So we look at the right two characters of start time and let's take a look and see what that brings back. All right. So we've got AM, PM, PM, AM, AM, PM, AM. So obviously only two choices here. Let me bring this formula over here so we can see all these things on the same screen. So what I want to do, in the case where it's returning PM, I want to add 12 more to this number because uh, 8 was fine and 12, actually 12 PM was fine, but 6 PM was wrong. I need, I need this to say 18. So now I'm going to do an if statement around here. So, but I don't want to fix 12 PM because 12 PM is the only time where we don't want it to, uh, to be any different. So let's, let's see what this looks like. All right. So write start time 2. That's, I'm going to copy that. And what I'm going to do right now is just do an if statement. If the write start time 2 is equal to whoops, PM, then I want to do one thing. Let's call that thing X. And if it's not, then I want to do thing Y. Now, I use X's and Y's a lot as outputs because if I try to write all the things I want to have happen inside the formula at the same time, it can get overwhelming. So first, I just want to test out this if formula. What does this look like? If it is, uh, if it is AM, it's returning Y. If it's PM, it's returning X. AM, X. Well, nope, we're looking, did we, are we looking at the right place? Start time, yes, okay. So start time, let's bring this over. So AM is Y, PM is X, PM is X, perfect. Okay, that's what we want, except we don't want it to be different in the case of 12 p.m. We actually want it to treat 12 p.m. like a Y. How can we get that to happen? 
Now we're going to do an if uh, nested if. So we're going to say if the uh, left of start time. Let me go ahead and do this. So the left of start time. So I'm only looking at the left two characters, right? And I'm saying if they are equal to 12, then I want one thing to happen. I want to actually return the number 12. Let's say for example. So let's make sure we got this right. If left two of start time is 12, then we'll return 12. Otherwise, we're going to look at this next part. So let's click save there. Nope, there was an, an issue in the formula. Oh, huh, there we go. Okay. Sometimes that syntax can get confusing. All right. So is this returning what we want? If it is an AM, we want to see why. Yes. If it's 12 noon, we want 12. And if it's PM, we want X. So in every case, we have now three different outputs. We have something that happens in, if it's AM, something happens if it's exactly 12 noon, and something else that happens if it's PM, right? So great. So now we are in a pretty good spot. So now we need to determine what is it that we want to return for X's and Y's and 12's that actually help us with this formula here. So this formula, again, this was working, it's just not always returning the right time, right? So let's go ahead and jump in here. So we know this formula is working for the case where it's noon. So if it's noon, we're going to return 12. That's what we're returning right now. Well, we can just return the formula. So now I just copied that formula and I'm pasting it in. So it's now going to return that formula in that case. So let's take a look at this and make sure we didn't get this wrong. So we don't like this format. But don't worry, this is going to get cleaned up once this whole formula is fixed. Is it returning the right time though? 831 at 12 noon. That is the right time. This right here, the 12, that's noon. So this is perfect so far. Now we know this formula is also working for AM. So in the case of AM, we were returning the Y. So let's replace Y with this formula. So you see how much easier this is when you do an if statement with, you know, X's and Y's and things of that nature. It's a lot easier to start piecing the right parts all together. So let's go ahead and save that now. Is this working? 831 at 8 a.m. Check. 831 at 12 noon, we already checked. 831 at 9 a.m. Check. Okay, it's looking great. The last piece we need to do now is fix this for, for the uh, p.m.s that are not noon. And so we need to find that uh, output. What is that output? It's x. Whoa. Let's get this right. Okay, so that is the x that we want to replace. And so now I've just copy pasted right there. And what we want to do here is instead of returning the uh, number of hours as what was returning, which was like 6 a.m. instead of 6 p.m., we want to add 12 more to that amount, right? So right inside here, this is the, this is the part where we're returning that integer. We're returning the left uh, integer there. So inside of that, we're going to add 12, or just outside of it, I should say. And then right before the part where we turned it into hours. So let's see if we got that right. Perfect. So now we're adding 12 more to all those PMs, which is exactly what we want to do. And we can take a look at this. So now formula one can be thrown away because we don't need it. Formula two, we've already used that part as well. And so really what we're looking at is just making sure that date and start time lined up into formula three. 831, 8 a.m., check. 831, 12 p.m., check. 831, 6 p.m., check. You'll notice that once all of our outputs were looking the way we wanted them to in the right format, that the funky formatting from before uh, got tossed. And so we can just really easily now look and see that all of these parts are pulling in correctly. Of course, we knew it was working right for a.m. before, but we still need to double check them now that we've reworked it. But now our p.m.s and our 12 noon are all fixed. If you want to just be extra diligent, you can check on some extra times by clicking here and just making sure that your formula updates accordingly. Okay, that definitely got a little bit uh, difficult at times, but congratulations on making it all the way through. If this video uh, added a lot of value for you, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this type of content and want to see more Airtable and Zapier uh, videos, be sure to click subscribe. 
And if you have any custom work that you might uh, need a little help on for your own business, I will include a link to my Calendly below in the description where you can schedule up some time for a free consultation. And in the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.